Now, Donald Trump has threatened to impose major new tariffs on cars imported to the U.S. from the European Union. It comes on the same day that EU tariffs on iconic American goods came into effect. It all sounds like the opening salvo in a costly trade war, and it wouldn't be the first time the world has found itself in this position, as Claire Sebastian explains. <laughs> 1930, prohibition was still in force, Herbert Hoover was in the White House, and the global economy was in the grip of a catastrophic depression. Two U.S. Senators, Reed Smoot and Willis Hawley, set out to stem the tide using tariffs. Smoot and Hawley were people who, whose districts were um, you know, producing industrial products and uh, competing with, with foreign industrial products and looking for protection in order to help their districts. Smoot Hawley or the Tariff Act of 1930 ballooned into hundreds of tariffs affecting all countries that exported to the US. Over a thousand economists had urged the president to veto the bill, warning of reprisals. They were right. Countries from Europe to Canada retaliated. Overall, US exports fell by 40% in two years. What we had is just an escalation around the world of, of tariffs uh, going higher. Most economists would say this didn't cause the, the Great Depression. The Great Depression had, had already started, but this made the recovery uh, longer, made the Great uh, Depression worse. While Smoot Hawley was repealed in 1934, these two figures have haunted U.S. administrations ever since. Well, now, some of us remember the 1930s. This the was 1985. If the ghost of Smoot Hawley rears its ugly head in Congress, if Congress crafts a depression-making bill, I'll fight it. While Reagan's rhetoric touted free trade, some of his actions told a different story. Over the course of the 1980s, he put restrictions and tariffs on Japanese cars, electronics, and motorcycles to protect domestic companies. Harley is back and standing tall. Did that help certain U.S. producers? Yes. Uh, but it was probably you know, harmful to the, the, the economy as a whole. And that refrain rang true again. If this administration doesn't give us the kind of remedy... In 2002, the U.S. steel industry was struggling under surging imports and falling prices. The Bush administration stepped in with tariffs of up to 30% on foreign uh, steel imports. The steel needs time for a breathing room so they can restructure. After about a year, the World Trade Organization ruled them a violation, and they were repealed. One study estimated 200,000 American jobs were lost due to higher steel prices. Be it all-out trade war or trade disputes, history shows protectionism in all forms is fraught with risk. Claire Sebastian, CNN Money, New York.